Hello everybody, today is a fourth video in my series of uh, fragrance videos where I'm discussing the perfumes that I have in my perfume collection. I call it rather my perfume wardrobe because I wear these things, I don't collect them. Um, and uh, the first few uh, I've divided into categories. Um, the very first video was about winter and cold weather, weather scents. Um, number two was about florals. Number three was about sweet and fruity fragrances. And this is number four. We're going to be talking about the first half of my everyday perfumes. So, so things that I am able to wear during any season. Sometimes they're season specific, most of the time they're not. Um, and uh, perfumes that I generally can wear for whatever occasion arises and very, very easy to pick, very wearable. Sort of you can blindly close your eyes and just pick one of these and it's probably going to suit whatever you're doing. Um, so these are the perfumes we're going to be talking about today, the workhorses of your perfume wardrobe. Um, I have here a couple of brands I divided the in the two videos that I'll be filming about this particular category. I divided them um, into brands a little bit uh, just for ease of conversation to have some kind of structure. We have Chanel, we have Narcisse Rodriguez, and we have uh, Giorgio Armani scent here. Those are the ones that I'm going to be mentioning today. Then in part five, you will see the rest of them, which will be um, Burberry scents, uh, Guerlain, some Guerlain scents, Dahlia Divine by Givenchy. So a little bit of a different, a different take on the everyday scents. So let's start with the ones that are just over here. And these are my Chanel's and I do have a whole video about Chanel scents that I own. I'll link it down below just in case you're interested to check it out because this is certainly not all of them. But here we have mostly representation from the number five line and this is not at all surprising to me because I actually really like number five. Um, I don't, I, I do know that there's a lot of mythology associated with the brand and specifically with this particular line. Uh, but for me, <laughs> number five roots deeply into my childhood because it was such a popular scent at the time. Um, and before that, it's just a very timeless scent and just a lot of people in my life tended to wear it when I was a kid. So it just rooted into me as just one of those things that is an everyday thing that you are supposed to smell. Um, just like if you're in the countryside, you're going to smell very fresh and green air in the morning, or you're going to smell ocean if you're near the ocean. Number five is just one of those things that integrated into my life somehow without me even knowing it. So therefore it's here and it's going nowhere. Um, so for me, number five is a very wearable everyday scent that I reach for a ton. That's why I have so many different iterations of this particular scent from the line. My favorite probably is going to be number five, Pure Parfum. So the pure perfume, not the other parfum. And it comes in a dabber, tiny little dabber like that. Um, this scent specifically has a very special meaning to me because I um, did wear it for my wedding because I did want something that is very um, near and dear to me, something that I feel myself being myself in and uh, my hands just automatically reached for the number five of the puff uh, from for the number five parfum so this scent is just incredibly special for me i am uh, running out of yet another bottle of it so this is something that i finish off fairly frequently uh, and this particular one I think is the most wearable um, number five if you are if you're not sure which number five to reach for I think the Pure Parfum is going to be a good choice because it's going to be a very easy thing to pull off it's just constructed beautifully in a way that plays with your body chemistry whoever wears it is probably going to enjoy it enough to wear it out until it's gone. Then we have the other toilet, slightly more challenging formulation. I would say for those of you who like a little vintage flair, a little bit of a unisex lean, if that's you, you might enjoy the number five other toilet more. Um, there is a little bit of a civity um, undertone there, which reminds me of vintage expensive soap. That's kind of what you're getting with the Eau de Toilette. There is soapiness to almost all Chanel's, but um, specifically in the Eau de Toilette of the number five line, you are going to get this vintage expensive boutique soap from like the 1950s or something like that. So kind of a special, <laughs> a special um, situation. I do like it because it does make me feel very clean. Uh, it's a particularly clean um, 
number five because it is so reminiscent of a vintage soap so i think if you do have a flair for the dramatic and vintage you probably will like this version the most um then we have the number five en première now they they come in uh, a soldier's flask sort of uh, flacon in, in in a bottle that is a little bit different um the, these tall bottles used to be a thing for the en première uh, this is a rounder, more feminine, more vanillic, a little bit more uh, approachable uh, way to wear number five. So première is uh, sort of like the le, but a little bit fuller bodied. So if you like the le, you'll probably like au première and vice versa. I do like them both. I think au première is probably a little bit has has a little bit more oomph and longevity to it so probably if i was to pick from the two i would choose this one but le i have owned and i'm going to repurchase so definitely i'll have my hands on it again uh au premier is charming it is fizzy and lemony and vanillic so just a, a delight really um and uh, has been repurchased by me all of them have been repurchased by me previously so none of them are all of them are uh, just a fixture in my perfume life. None of them are transient. I guess the same can be said about Chanel Chance or Tendre. Generally, Chance line is really not my favorite in the Chanel lineup. I think they're a little bit lacking in originality a lot of the time, although Tendre is probably more of an exception to that. Uh, Tendre is one that I owned before, so this is not my first time purchasing. I do have a fresh bottle that I just bought um, this year, so um, generally fragrances last me two to three years, each bottle uh, about there. So Chanel Chance Tendre tends to be something that I reach for in the spring and closer to the summer. It is a quince and floral combination, very lightweight. Uh, feels like this is a, another parfum it wears like a good eau de toilette uh, and it creates the image of this uh, young university student um, in a good program expensive program uh, and there's a little bit of a cigarette undertone like a light fruity cigarette undertone with it which i find somehow charming uh, mostly because it just it just reminds me of those that that time when you're 18 19 20 and you are in university and you sneak out for a break and maybe your friend smokes a fruity cigarette next to you quickly but between lectures or you know it's it's all very playful very lightweight very easy going so if, if you like that kind of a um that kind of a flair. I think Cotendre is going to work well for you. Oh, I started wearing it when I was doing my master's, so it just it has a scent memory for me as well. So um, it's an easy pick for for spring and summer, and something that is going to create this easy going, light hearted, and very wearable um, air around you. So I think. Uh, pretty easy pick if you're not sure what to wear. Chance uh, Chance is always going to be a, a, an easy pick that's going to save you. Here I have an everyday scent that is absolutely not um, reachable and also will not be liked by many, I don't think. And this is Narcisse Rodriguez for her. It's a, a, a bottle that was a very limited edition. This is Musk uh, Collection, so Musk Collection of the Parfum Intense. Uh, so. This guy, I bought two bottles when it came out. Although I couldn't afford two bottles, I bought two bottles because I knew that I will not be able to get it again. And this is a slightly spiced musk. It's a quite an interesting scent. It doesn't wear well on everybody. I have to say, um, on me, it sings beautifully. It's kind of an intimate, um, intimate skin-like musk uh, on my skin. I enjoyed it tremendously. I've worn through a bottle, a full bottle before, and this is my second bottle and it's less than half full. So once it's gone, it's gone. I don't think I'll be able to find it anymore. It's sold on eBay for some kind of ridiculous prices. So I'm not about that scalp life. So, and then I have to find an alternative. Do you know any alternatives to this fragrance? It was limited edition. I sincerely hope I can find something relatively similar. Uh, but it's got that skin scent uh, flair that I really enjoy. It's got it's got that skin scent magic um, that I like. 
Then we have Terra di Gioia from Giorgio Armani. This is a new buy for me. I really haven't had this perfume for very long, just a couple of months. Um, I have started using it uh, in the fall. I was kind of quite fond of it in the fall, but I do think that it's more of a spring summer, more of a summer scent really. It's a tropical vacation, um, tropical vacation fragrance. Again, you can wear it whenever, but for me, this is probably going to be more wearable in the spring and summer. Although in the middle of winter, if you are off to a tropical destination, who can fault you for pulling out something like this? Um, so I wasn't sure if I should put it more in the fruity and sweet category. I ended up with it here because it's not so much fruity and sweet and it is pretty wearable, but it is definitely for me a seasonal scent. I do like the uh, De Joya line. They did bump up some quite cool um, conceptual fragrances lately and Terra De Joya is one of those easygoing vacation scents, which I find is difficult to get in a very sophisticated execution meaning that these scents are hard to make elevated. They're mostly quite uh, flat, poppy, and pina colada-like, and this is not it. This is, this is a very um, elevated version of a tropical vacation scent. And then lastly, we have Narciso from Narciso Rodriguez. This is the Eau de Toilette. I do have the Eau de Parfum in the white cube. The Eau de Toilette is in the black cube, just equally as beautiful, of course, in terms of aesthetics. Um, for me, Black Cube is probably a little bit more wearable. There is a creaminess to the other uh, parfum that is lacking here. This is a little bit more transparent, uh, but the beautiful, beautiful floral musk is here. And it's really, it's the musk that is the dominant note here, not as much in terms of florals. Um, although they're equally well balanced, really this is a beautiful Narciso Rodriguez musk if you are a fan of their musks as I am that's why I'm buying their perfumery I'm buying it for the musks the musks are magical uh, I think that this is a really worthwhile find in terms of an everyday scent I am not sure if they still make it or or if they are planning to discontinue it but I think it would be a scent to discontinue because it is such a beautiful and very very wearable uh, musky floral with the emphasis on the muskiness. It's slightly transparent, slightly translucent, but not weak in any kind of way. The wear time is really good on it too. It's just it's just light, lighter in terms of its texture than is the other parfum. Although they are definitely genetically linked to each other for sure, but uh, the other toilette is definitely probably easier to pull off for most people, I would imagine. Um, check it out if you like floral musks. This is a great floral musk and a very, very easy fragrance to wear. I think for whenever and for whatever season, it's absolutely seasonless. There is this translucency to it that is going to fit whatever. So you shine, not your fragrance. Okay, so these are the scents that I'm wearing uh, whenever. <laughs> these are the versatile, everyday, uh, occasion, if any occasion kind of sense. Let me know if you own any of them. Do you feel the same way about them as I do? Um, and also, what else do you consider for you to be uh, an everyday, easy peasy, pick up and go, fits anytime, anywhere kind of scent? I'm interested to know what kind of perfumes do you put in that category for yourself? Um, it's 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 a very good versatile category to have because. Um, it's just the easiest way to wear fragrances. All right, that's it for today. See you guys later. Have a good day. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay well. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.